All right, so uh, new setting. I'm in one of the classrooms here at our church, and uh, I'm actually going to be doing some teaching. Uh, so I've gotten a lot of material written out and everything. Uh, so I, I also teach at the church, as well as doing lighting. And don't worry, this video is about the lighting. Uh, that's what you're here for. So a lot of the, uh, some people have been kind of emailing me, messaging me, commenting on videos and things like that. How can I get a copy of such and such? Some of the written materials that I've shown in previous videos. And so um, this little series is basically me telling you exactly what I have, opening up all my resources that I've used, that I've created, uh, so that you can have it too. I, I acquired the stuff for free right off the internet, you know, I created the handbook or the series of handbooks. And I also, um, I've also done uh, some work for other churches. Um, but, you know, one of the things that I believe in is paying it forward. And so since I acquired everything that I have for free, essentially, I wanted to go ahead and hand it to you. Um, particularly if you're doing lighting for your church, building a lighting team for your church. That's kind of what this is geared towards. But I guess any kind of lighting ministry or any kind of lighting team, I should say, um, might find some use in here. <laughs> um, so I guess that's gonna be a series of videos. Each video will go over each kind of, kind of book that we have, handbook. And so um, in the description, all the different links to different materials and things that I mentioned will be available to you. My email will also be available. So if you wanna email me um, and I can give you the PDF files of these handbooks so that you can, you know, you can see them and look at them and, and you know, customize them for your team. That's all perfectly fine. Um, <clears throat> you know, since I'm paying it forward, I hope you're willing to pay it forward and things like that. Uh, none of this stuff is under copyright. I mean, theoretically, there's the automatic copyright rule, but, you know, I haven't submitted anything, you know. It's, so, uh, but, you know, I hope you don't take credit for these these things. Um, that would be kind of messed up. But anyway, these are the handbooks. We have a general handbook for all members of the team. And, uh, you know, everyone has to go through this in order to uh, basically establish membership. Then you have the lighting technician handbook. You have a lighting designer handbook and then the lighting Bible. Okay, so those are going to be the four things that we're going to talk about Um you may you, you may have seen some of this in previous videos. Maybe this is the first time you've seen, at least, especially that one. That's the newest one that we have. But we'll talk about the general handbook for today. So the purpose of a general handbook is to let members know what they're getting involved in. And for our case, what is the ministry about? What is, what, what is our goal? What is our mission? We know lighting is dangerous, so we'll be talking about different safety standards, and there's also stuff for discipline and how to communicate with one another. So I dove into a lot of things. I don't remember how many pages I have here, but uh, the original handbook was about 18 pages. I think now, and these are all double-sided, but I think now it might be about 30-something. You know, So changes have come and updates and things like that, and so... This is the handbook. Now, the first thing that we talk about in the handbook is the church itself. That's the name of our church, Abundant Life Fellowship. That's their mission, loving, learning, and transforming, and they have a vision. And so, you know, we want to talk about the church first because obviously we're part of the church, so we need to make sure that we understand where we're coming from. Now, our own mission and, and all of that. And so we have a mission to be masters of light. And we have a motto, this is how we do lighting. So we do it safely, quickly, and quietly. Um, and safely comes first. So these are all by um, order of priority. So we number one is safely. If we can afford to, we'll do it quickly. And if we can afford to, we'll do it quietly. But we always wanna be here. We have our pledge. This is our promise of how we'll treat others in the ministry. We're going to be kind, 
honest, and respectful. And then our Bible verse is Genesis 1-3, let there be light. We also use Matthew 5.16 as a personal reference Bible verse, let our light so shine. Um, so we kind of, I guess you could say we have two, but the general ministry one is Genesis 1-3, based off of the quote, let there be light. That's our job. That's our goal, to let there be light. And so having that biblical foundation is very important. Here I talked about serving on the on the uh, in the ministry why it's why it's important to serve what it means to serve what it means to be a servant um this one is abbreviated version just to fit in the handbook but i also have like it's about three or four pages it's a long one um and then we have this spiritual light development <clears throat> now one of the things about light and lighting is that we can use the bible as a literal reference for what we do. So we have a lot of uh, passages, um, statements followed by the passage. And so that just allows us to um, have a, a spiritual sense of what light is. Um, you know, lighting could be an art, it's science, but it's also spiritual. And understanding the light that, you know, that God is, we have an even greater appreciation for light and how it functions in the ministry. Spiritual light comes first before the physical light. And so we want to master this. That's what it means in our mission to master light. And so we're talking about all kinds of light, whether it's spiritual or physical. Crew etiquette, which is basically what to do while being part of a service or, you know, whatever. No food, drink, no chewing gum, no talking, no cell phone use. This is kind of in progress, uh, you know, as I think of more things to put on. But that you definitely want to have something, how to behave during services and productions and things like that. So basic terminology. Now, remember, this is basic. And I'll put the link of where I got these terms from in the description because there was a website. <coughs> but that's one page, two page, three page, four page. And that's just the basics. Um, you know, there's some terms, and the thing with this ministry, we were built to do stage lighting, so most of these terms are for stage lighting. We're not even talking about film lighting or set lighting. Those have their own set of terms, and so, um, you know, that's always fun to deal with. Types of lights, these are the lights that are used in our sanctuary, just naming them. We have an up light, we have follow spot. Broadcast, stage, house, perimeter, flame, strobes, studio lights. We also recently got a fog machine, so I'll have to update this um, to include that. But that's an idea for you. You want to label all of the lights in the sanctuary so that, you know, because people might name it something else. And, you know, you want to know exactly what you're talking about when you mention what the name of the light is. I also, have, I also made a video of this. It's only for my crew's eyes, but I showed them each of these lights. So now they, they've seen it and they know, you know what the description is. So when we say turn on the house lights, we know exactly what we mean. And so it's easier for us to communicate. So I would recommend um, having some kind of list like this. <clears throat> the safety standards. Um, there are a lot of dangers and things like that. And I list some of them here, electrocution, falling equipment, and fires. And that all comes from lighting itself. So, you, you know, you want to be careful. And some of the things that you can use, pipe clamps, safety cables, sandbags, um, as well as gaffers, tape. I do want to focus here on one major rule. And I think definitely this should be like an un... It's like um, one of those rules that's like understood just in general, but under no circumstances, anyone other than train members or the crew allowed to touch the equipment in any way. People can get hurt and people can mess things up. And then that's it. So definitely, you know, I have um, what to do if something happens. We talk about praying, remaining calm, don't touch anything that might be dangerous. You know, like I said, I'll be able to give you the file for this if you want to see these and read them on your own speed. 
Um, I don't want to take too much time here. I'm dealing with extension cord and power strip safety. And that takes up a couple of pages in itself. So that there's a lot of content in there. Rigging equipment. Rigging just means securing equipment. Um, how to deal with lasers. Um, you know, so we have that. Other safety rules, being around ladders, fire extinguishers, and things like that. Now the positions. Positions are ideal. And there was one website that I visited, and again, all in the description, but it's called Get In Media. Get In Media. And they have a, an extensive list of all kinds of positions for, you know, all kinds of areas of not only film, but stage and even gaming and things like that. So they have a lot of personnel options. And so I kind of just based it off of what they had available. But you want to have people that have designated roles, they know exactly what they're supposed to do. And that way, when they come to work, this is my workspace, this is what I'm doing. Obviously, you can be more than one position if you want, you know, that's really up to you, but you definitely wanna have something clear where people can know who they are and what they do. As you can see, I have a lot of different positions here, but obviously, you know, you need someone to control light board, you need someone to do file spots, special effects, you know, we have designers on staff and things like that. So it's, you know, the, all the positions are theoretically needed. You know. Discipline. Now, discipline is always tricky because we're in an environment where it's sort of like, well, this is volunteer, you know, I'm, I'm giving my time. But like I said, volunteer and serving are two different things. And that's one of the things I talk about in my serving section earlier. And so serving is something important. God wants us to serve. That's a commandment to serve. And so um, if you look at it from that st standpoint, I think it's perfectly uh, acceptable to discipline people if they mess up. And so some of the things that I do, if you're, if you're late without notice, so if you don't tell me that you're gonna be running late, you know, with a, if I don't get a heads up, you know, there's a series of steps that need to be followed. If you're absent without notice, there's a series of steps. Um, lack of communication. So if you don't, you know, if you're ignoring people or you're not responding and things like that, there's a series of steps. And I always have, you know, that, that room to mess up but to give back. You know, if you mess up to a point where you keep messing up, then, you know, it gets worse and worse. Training, if you don't do your training, you know, um, you can't light. Because if you don't if you don't have the training, how can you do anything? You know, so you, you just like uh, going to school, getting a degree. You want to be a lawyer, you got to go in the training. You got to get your education. You got to do the ba 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 ba. So, um, and then we have some things that are just not tolerated. If you intentionally safety standards, if you physically emotionally harm, or if you break the pledge, if you do that intentionally, like you really like I don't care. Like just for example. Oh, I know what the rule is, but I'm going to do it this way anyway. You're gone. That's it. Dealing with crew conflict. And um, so I used Matthew 18, 15 to 17 as a base of how to deal with when we have trouble. You know, obviously, we're not going to get along 100% of the time. There's going to be some blow ups and things like that. And so we've never had an episode where we've had to turn to church leadership about a problem with our members not getting along or something like that. Um, I know one, one example, we had one of our members thought that another member didn't like her. And you know, she came to me and was like, I don't think he likes me. And I remember telling her, you know, well, did you talk to him about it? And she was like, well, no. I was like, well, go ahead, because phase one, you know, you got to confront the person. Just like it says in the scripture, go and tell him between you and him, you know. So she was supposed to go talk to him first about it and then see what happens. So I told her, you know what, go back, go him, you know, you and him alone and then talk about, see if you can come to an agreement. And that's what she did. And she came back to me and said, yeah, everything's fine. I was like, yeah, all right. But it's so important to talk about these things and to address these things because 
you know, she could have been like, well, he doesn't like me, so then she would have distanced herself. Then he would have been wondering, well, why isn't she, you know, why is she giving me the cold shoulder? Did I do something? Now he's hurt. So everyone's hurt and no one's talking about it. So I encourage you when you're building your ministry or if you have a ministry and you're trying to modify some things, this is an idea to use as well. Communication standard, we use GroupMe, Slack, and as obviously in person. So, you know, things I don't accept, if you forgot, you gotta be more responsible than that. And if you're busy, that means you're probably too busy for the ministry, so maybe it's time to sit down, you know, think about some things, think about priorities. Because when you sign up to serve, you're given a commitment, and we need you to hold up to that commitment, and part of it is communicating. Group me of guidelines, slack guidelines. That's kind of stuff that I want you to do. That's kind of a personal thing for my ministry. Your ministry might be something different. You might want to have them do different things on there. A training program. This is also this document is uh, something in progress. But you know, I've built the training program as well through a series of videos and articles that I have my team read and watch, as well as um, studying Bible verses like the verses I showed you earlier. And you know, that, that's all part of the training program. So um, it's not much to write about because it's, like I said, it's a video, it's an article, and then it's Bible study. But this kind of describes what the program is about. So that's it for the general handbook. Like I said, it's, um, you know, it, it's something to kind of get the members of your team or ministry what is the expectations? What are we here for? What are we doing? And, um, <clears throat> you know, so if you have any questions, let me know. Um, my email should be in the description. You know, all the links to different things that I've used to build this will be in the description as well. And so you'll be able to use that to, uh, you know, to, um, do whatever you want to do. In case, you know, in case you want to build a handbook on scrap or, you know, from, uh, from scratch, um, on your own versus modifying mine that's hey perfectly fine that's why I want to give you the links as well so email should be there links and um, any other questions let me know I'll be happy to answer them on the YouTube section or if you know me on social media you can message me there I don't you know I don't really care um, most active I'm on Twitter and I do check on Facebook um, everywhere else I'm kind of like uh, so, yeah, don't, yeah, so, you know, let me know if you have any questions. I hope you've enjoyed this. I'm, in the next video, we'll be going over this. And there, now I will say about the technician handbook and the designer handbook, these are heavily based off of how we do our services here in the church. These are like guidebooks for going through services and different events. So a lot of the stuff may seem foreign, but the concept, will be important so you know there won't be a lot you probably won't be able to copy what is here but the ideas that are in here um, and the methods that are used you might consider using that so you know that's just a heads up but this is one that you could almost copy and paste and just put the name of your church right there and just kind of go from there that's one of the, what these are so um okay good i'm hoping to keep each video less than 20 minutes so we'll see how that goes. The designer book might be, uh, you can see it's already a thick little guy. There's, there's a lot of stuff going on. So we'll see what happens. But um, thanks for watching. Hope this is helpful. Keep shining.